Travel studio to studio with your local Lay Dominicans. We'll be discussing some of the gems we've discovered in our studium, where we share the fruits of our contemplation in the joy of the gospel message. Representing our St. Albert the Great, Lay Dominican chapter and co-host of today's show are myself, Cheryl Drozda, Jeff Drozda, Michael Totaro. And today we have one of those hot topics, a very interesting and upcoming topic that many of you, if you're like me, uh, feel a little bit behind of times on, but it's uh, AI or artificial intelligence, right? My, Mike's a specialist in this area, actually. So um, we're going to, I'm going to be the person in the room that doesn't really have to work too hard to act like the one that doesn't know anything. <laughs> and Mike's going to lead the discussion and explain this to us. Yeah. So um, artificial intelligence, um, we, you know, it's it's really over the past year, couple of years, I suppose, it's really de- developed just some, you know, rapid rise in in popularity and notoriety. Uh, but it's been around for a long time, actually, since the 1950s, uh, believe it or not. And um, going through the history of that uh, is what could be a segment in and of itself in some other kind of venue or context. Um, but I'd like to at least begin just to set the stage for our discussion today. And then I, I and then after this sort of uh, share the story with with our listeners, uh, we then want to make clear about when our discussion about artificial intelligence today is is not the broad field of artificial intelligence, but a rather narrow uh, sort of uh, dimension of that. Um, so it turns out that in 2022, around July 2022, um, uh, Dr. Blake Lemoyne, who was at that time a Google engineer, uh, AI engineer, uh, and who also uh, happens to be a an alum of uh, UL Lafayette, my my own department. Um, so he made some claims, uh, that, and this became sort of national news that um, the Google had a Google's AI chatbot is actually sentient. Um, and so. Without going into all the deets about details that kind of led up to that event where he he sort of made this public, um, he he basically kind of shared uh, initially internally uh, through internal memos and such that were rejected by, uh, according to articles that have been written about this event, rejected by Google as being not really of any substance. And so basically, I'll, I'll just kind of read some uh, excerpts from a Scientific American um, article on this. And so the Google product uh, in question is called Lambda, which stands for Language Model for Dialogue Applications. Okay. AI, large language model, we'll kind of talk about that in a moment. So this is the Lambda speaking, quote, I want everyone to understand that I am, in fact, a person, end quote. And so Bla- Dr. Lemoyne uh, basically said that um, he's, this sort of was a little bit alarming, and um, he, he continued by providing some additional excerpts from his, this sort of interview, quote-unquote interview, between himself and this Lambda AI application. So once again, I'll, I'll continue. So Lambda then says, quote, The nature of my consciousness sentience is that I am aware of my existence. I desire to know more about the world, and I feel happy or sad at times, end quote. And so as I uh, alluded to earlier, so he um, raised his concerns about this. Internally, it was pretty much rejected, and uh, because he... He claimed, Dr. Lemoyne claimed, that uh, in his in his view, as an AI, a Google AI engineer, is that this software is actually sentient. When you say that, when you say sentient, can you explain that just in case? Basically, as we are, we are sentient, right? right? And there's we are living beings that we know, and we're going to get into this a little later on, but we, we do have intelligence and we have a free will. We have desires, we have emotions, we have hopes, we have dreams. That's essentially what Dr. Claiming. Lemoyne was claiming okay. at the time. So a lot of things happened, and ultimately he was fired for this. Okay, So um, now I, I just want to, um, I, mean, I don't know if it's appropriate at this point, but let me just say that um, I'm in complete disagreement with Dr. Lemoyne, okay? um, and I think that 
that certainly the church will back that up. Uh, you know, that I think that my take on it is probably correct. And I think that most Roman Catholics would, uh, would agree as well. But it, but it did sort of really bring to the fore, um, and I think that's what sort of kind of fed into the hype that we're now reading about, right? Because now there are some, there's a lot of excitement, but there's also, there are a lot of concerns, right? right. And I think there are fears. Right. And so we're going to get into to some of those things uh, a, a bit later on. So I guess the most, so, so when we think about AI, as I said earlier, it began in the 1950s, okay? Broadly speaking, we're talking about things like robotics and all those things that we've seen games. in movies, That's a really games, common, video games. Video right. gaming so is you, very, has AI. And we were, we were just saying, I was talking to my, uh, our oldest son, Nicholas, said, you know, you played Pac-Man. It had some artificial intelligence. It had to learn how to get you. <laughs> and, and if you ate one of those magic pills, then it knew to run away from you. I mean, this is artificial intelligence at its very basic, you know, simple um, thought, but we're going into um, LLMs, our right. large language models, which right. are actually more conversational. Um, and and just to tell everybody, I'm I'm fortunate to have <laughs> some a young person who can explain some of this to me. So if you're out there, and um, you know the idea behind this is that you have input, right? Yes. And you have output, and in between there, there's networking, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot's happening, and deep learning is the deep, the more and more networking that's going on in between your input and output. That's, that's but exactly it's right. It's all human input and output. There's nothing, it's learning from things that are yeah. being input by humans, right? Am exactly. I right? And the learning that's taking place uh, in those, what we call the hidden layers right. you know, the input layer, exactly. the output layer. The layers between that, okay, um, and the deep neural networks, those are the layers. And they're called deep neural networks because there's more than one layer. Right. So that's what we call deep, deep neural networks. And, uh, and so what is the learning? Well, the learning certainly is not, even though there's been, there are these attempts to try and, you know, mimic the, the way the brain does the learning, but this is electronics, it's software, et cetera, et cetera. So the learning happens basically using a lot of statistics and linear algebra and some calculus. I mean, it's math. That's what right. it is, okay? So nothing magical about it at all. But it is, it is impressive. It's amazing. Um, and I think the most sort of – so, Cheryl, you mentioned LLMs, large language models. So chat GPT. I mean, that's been kind of right. like the, the, you know, the discussion du jour, right? And um, – <laughs> So ChatGPT was uh, launched by OpenAI in um, November of 2022. Um, so ChatGPT stands for Chat Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, okay? It's a chatbot or chatterbot, okay, that is based on a large language model. And again, we're going to cover just a few. We're not going to get into all the, the technical details because that's it's pretty complicated, but and it's not really germane here. But just a, a few kind of definitions, so at least we're all kind of on the same page. So um, basically, a large language model enables users, that's you and me, right, to refine and steer a conversation towards a desired length, format, style, depth, um, and language. And successive prompts and replies, which are replies, also known as prompt engineering, are considered at each stage along the way. So what is a chatbot? It's a software application or web interface that's designed to mimic human conversation. That's bottom line, okay, through text or voice. Large language model um, is notable for its ability to achieve general purpose language understanding and generation. And uh, they have to learn. LLMs have to learn. And um, basically learning from what? Well, uh, there's this kind of important phase for all um machine and deep learning uh, model development, and that's called training. So they have to learn by way of training. And again, I won't get into that. There are different kinds of trainings that, that are possible and doable. We'll just kind of leave that for some other time. Uh, the transformer term, in that's the T of the GPT, uh, it's a deep learning architecture based on a particular mechanism that's called the multi-head attention mechanism. And um, it's, again, I won't get into the details, but it, it, the, the training time is kind of reduced from what is normally done uh, using what are called recurrent neural networks. Um, and so Cheryl made mention of the networks. Okay, we're not talking about computer networks, by the way. We're talking about these are logical networks of what are called neurons, okay? 
Um, anyway, so so that's what the, the T stands for in GPT, transformer. And I've already mentioned what prompt engineering is all about. This idea of generative AI um, is artificial intelligence that basically generates text, images, or other media using what are called generative models. And so we've kind of been talking about that. Um, one important point before we then get into some of the, the more sort of faith and philosophical and theological kind of points, um, it's worth noting that um, in July of 23, ChatGPT with purportedly passed what is called the Turing test, mm. T-U-R-I-N-G, named after, which was developed by Alan Turing, who was a mathematician, and again, his life is pretty interesting, tragic ending, but that's it, all out there on the web. Um, there is some disagreement, however, about whether it really passed the test or not. It's also why the, the, the test is also known as the Imitation Game. So there was a movie of that same title about Alan Turing. So, so supposedly it, it passed the test. And fundamentally what it is, is, you know, it, it, you have an interrogator who is uh, one side of the wall, can't see uh, what's on the other side. On the other side, you have a human uh, individual and you've got the AI, like the you know, chat GPT, for example. And in the course of this sort of discussion that takes place, the the human being, the, the interrogator, really can't discern or distinguish between which of the X or Y on the other side is the person, the human being, or it's the AI. Thing, okay, so supposedly it passed that, but then now there are claims that, um, well, it's really not an appropriate test for LLMs. Again, that's a whole other topic. I think what we want to do is pause for a moment and reflect upon something. Let's look at the term artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. okay? Okay, well, I think we all kind of know what intelligence is. But this, this okay, this uh, label, artificial, is precisely that, okay? It's not actual intelligence as the type of intelligence that we have, although the hype out there would have us think otherwise. So artificial, artifact, developed by human beings, Okay, not created, but developed. We have to be, I think it's important to consider that there's only one creator, and that's God himself. Okay, we can build things, right? But we can't create anything, per se. Okay. Um, so, so this would negate the, some people claiming that AI is actually some form of, like, God-like thing. Exactly. <laughs> well, and, and actually, I think, I think part of the problem, too, is I think there's a bit of sort of excitement it's kind of anthropomorphic in this sense it's like wow like we are create we're the creators uh, yeah see we are creating these sentient beings ourselves what does that make us right, right. gods you mm -hmm. see and and I'm, I'm not saying that everybody is thinking that but i know this this was actually written about back in the early 1970s um uh, by an mit computer scientist and the title of the book is Computer Power and Human Reason. And, and basically what he said was, you know, the, the, t the mindset of the typical program at that time is I can create my own worlds, my own universes. And again, there are a whole lot of philosophical and I think even theological dimensions to that. Again, that would be for a later time. So I think we need to be, be you know, clear about what this discussion is all about, and that's focusing on the that one sort of narrow but but very wide, becoming more widely known aspect of AI, and that is you know LLMs, namely by way of Chat GPT and other kinds of chatbots. Well, now what does the church have to say about this? And if it's okay, Cheryl, I'd like to kind of speak a little bit. Oh, about that'd that. be great. Yeah. So. Um, so if you have your, you know, Catechism of the Catholic Church handy, uh, I refer you to uh, Part 3, Life in Christ, Section 1, Man's Vocation, Life in the Spirit, Chapter 1, The Dignity of the Human Person, Article 1, Man, the Image of God. So fundamentally, okay, man is created by God in his image with intellect and will. That's, that's sort of the encapsulation, encapsulation of that. And so just a few little sort of excerpts from that. Um, so Article 1701, Christ in the very revelation of the mystery of the Father and of his love makes man fully manifest to himself and brings to light his exalted vocation. It is in Christ, the image of the invisible God, that man has been created, quote, in the image and likeness of the Creator. It is in Christ, Redeemer and Savior, that the divine image disfigured in man by the first sin has been restored to its original beauty and ennobled by the grace of God. 
So we see clearly that our intellect and will um, come from God himself. We do not, we cannot ourselves, you know, create anything with intellect and will. At best, we can, you know, create, uh, develop things that might simulate or emulate that, especially the intellect part. And it may give us this kind of sense that there's some kind of will there, but it can't happen. So only man is made in the image and likeness of God. That's the part I'd want to emphasize right Absolutely. there. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. And I think it's so important for everyone to keep in mind. Um, 1702 goes on, uh, the divine image is present in every man, every person. It shines forth in the communion of persons and the likeness of the unity of the divine persons among themselves. And so I would encourage our listeners to, to look at that particular article, Man, the Image of God, when thinking about and looking at AI and all the hype that surrounds it. And bear in mind that there is nothing in Scripture, there's nothing in, in Catholic theology uh, that, that even hints at this potential man, you know, people who can create sentient, uh, intelligent beings. Well, you are listening to a, a very interesting discussion today on, on AI here on Christ Our King Catholic Radio. It's a radio for uh, Acadiana at 90.5 FM and 99.5 FM and 12.30 AM. Uh, we are your local lay Dominicans, your third order Dominicans here, based out of Our Lady of Wisdom Parish in Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, and also this program comes to you every Thursday at 4 p.m. and is brought to you by Stein Lumber. Today we are talking about a, a, a very complex topic, but in a very short period of time, I am sure it's going to affect every single one of us in one way, shape, or form. I was reading an article, as a matter of fact, today that the leader of the uh, IMF, the International Monetary Fund, came out with a report and said that you know, 60% of the workforce will be affected by AI in one way, shape, form, or another. And she had mentioned that you know, it, it is incumbent to you know, look at the good that can come about it and, and, and make sure that, that bad does not take place. Of course, we know, you know that there will be occasions for that. But you know, she was talking about the, the uh, you know, third or second world uh, developed countries, you know, here's a chance for, you know, for them to become a, a little bit better off in terms of um, their productivity and, and, and their economy. So, you know, this does have world implications. And it, I thought it was very interesting that, you know, even, even the church, even the Vatican you know, has come out and they've, they've been a leader in this discussion because uh, I know back, I think it was 2020, when there was a little uh, a discussion on, uh, you know, the ethics around AI. And there was an organization and a document called the Rome Call for AI Ethics. And it was a document signed back on February 28th of, of 2020 in Rome. And it was signed by the president of the Pontifical Academy for Life, the president of Microsoft, a uh, representative from IBM, and, and other industry leaders and world leaders because, you know, with something coming on so fast and, and with such an impact that it was really important for um, leaders across the world to come together. And even the, uh, the Holy Father, uh, Pope Francis, said that, you know, there's that urgent need uh, for a guide for development of use in a responsible way, but we have to use it in an ethical manner and have that reflection uh, because it, it is going to affect all of us in one way, shape, or form. So you know, having this discussion at this time, I think, is very timely. And, and, and Mike, you'd, you'd mentioned you know, sort of moral and ethics and, and that sort of thing and what the Church has to say. I mean, what role do you think that the Church has in, in, in this discussion? Um, and, of course, as, as Dominicans, um, you know, we're, we're very engaged in not only what takes place um, in society, but in the church, and, and bringing truth and, and, and virtue to, uh, to our discussion. So, you know, as I know St. Thomas Aquinas didn't have to worry about AI, but, you know, but, but we do. So what, what are your thoughts as, as the church looks at this moving forward, and even as, as, as Dominicans in our role here? Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, so interestingly, um, the uh, uh, brother Eric Salabier, uh, uh, Salabier, I uh, hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, OP, he's the chairman 
of the Executive Committee of the Human Technology Foundation, and he's a founder of Optic, which I'm not very familiar with, but I've gotten this information from uh, the website of Ordo Predicatorum. Um, and, and I'd like to just kind of, I think that this, what you just said, Jeff, really was, uh, really, you know, establishes a nice context and, and, and framework for what the church teaches. And of course, we know the Dominican order is absolutely committed. You know, we are, as Dominicans, uh, are committed to truth, veritas, and of course, uh, by way of, as it is taught to us, and the deposit of faith is protected by Holy Mother Church. And so what uh, Brother Eric uh, writes, he says, um, and I quote, and yet it talks, end quote. He says, this is what Galileo might have said to the inquisitors of artificial intelligence. Quick to criticize its lack of common sense, its hallucinations, and its annoying tendency to draw on other people's data to flesh out its discourse. So now, reminder, uh, these, you know, these large language models, chat GPT and others, they must be trained. Okay, so chat GPT, as an example, was trained using what data set? The entire internet and web, okay? Without it, it would have nothing. Right. Okay, that's important to keep in mind. So he goes on to, he writes, let's face it, despite their limitations, the generative AI models championed by chat GPT represent a major step forward in the history of artificial intelligence. Okay. And this milestone is not, above all, technological. For the first time, we are faced with an instance capable of producing a truly coherent and plausible discourse without being endowed with intelligence, end quote. And that's important, right, because the, the, the models do not themselves have intelligence, at least not in the, the, the definition of intelligence as what we as humans possess because we have been given intellect by God himself. We cannot give that to software, hardware, anything like that. Um, and so he goes on to, and I'll just kind of paraphrase, paraphrase the rest of, the, of what he wrote, and, and he basically says, so look, there, you know, as Jeff, you just alluded to, there are, there are many wonderful things that can happen from this, this remarkable technology. Um, recently, I had a doctor's uh, appointment, and my doctor, we were just he knows what I do, what I teach, and he said, man, I'm really worried about being replaced by chat GPT, and I said, doc, don't worry about it. Because speaking for myself, there's no way I would ever put my life and my health, you know, in the hands of this piece of software running on some hardware. Uh, there will always be the need for the human expert, okay? I said, but, you know, and as has been written about, I think, quite a bit, um, it can help. And even some physicians that have been interviewed about this have acknowledged that this kind of tool is helpful for them to more quickly and maybe more accurately triangulate, okay, some potential diagnosis. Right. Well, this is good. This is a good thing. So I think all the potential concerns about the bad that can take place will not come from the AI itself, but instead will come from humans who intend to misuse and abuse the AI. And we see this in everything. Think about Gutenberg in the early, what, 1400s when he developed the first printing press, it was viewed as something like what we're viewing, how we are viewing now, Chat GPT. It was like it, it was it was almost considered in some corners by as being something demonic or whatever. You know, but look what it has done. But we also know that it, you know, writing, right, printing, printing press can be misused and used for propaganda that's not so good. And I won't go into it now, but I do blame Gutenberg and his printing press on our messed up English spelling. But anyway, I won't go there right now. <laughs> right. And you put a lot of monks out of work. <laughs> this is true. This is true, yes. <laughs> and then we move forward. Like, you mentioned that. And, and But also, we look back at the Industrial Revolution, a lot of people worried, you know, yes. oh boy, here it comes, we're going to be out of work. But we just have to adapt. We're adaptive. We are... Um, we are the ones made in the image and likeness of God. Absolutely. And this, there's nothing to fear. That's the big thing that I want to put out there. Um, you know, I was talking to my mom earlier, and um, she happened to, I mentioned that we were going to be discussing this. She um, was like, I don't know, they're, they're getting so smart, they're going to outpace us as humans. I'm like, no, <laughs> that's just not possible because they, they're limited by us, ourselves. There's, not, there's no way they can surpass us. That is correct, Cheryl. I mean, you're spot on. But again... The, the the concern really is from the human uh, right. uh, sort of the 
that individual who knows how to control this stuff, right. okay, and will then use it for, as we see in so many contexts, and it's historically been, you know, the case in terms of controlling others, power, and all this right. kind of stuff for centuries. So this is just a technology, a new technology right. that, um, you know, it's 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 so similar. Not in terms of the specifics, right? But it's similar in concept and in principle uh, to everything that has come before these. And I just thought of something. You know, it's interesting that the the val the virtue of truth. So many people sometimes um, will negate that with some philosophies. But think about like what you were using as an example: the doctor using this. Um, he only he will get a good output. And get good information if everything that's put in there is truthful, right? Yes. You can see how it can get nefarious if there's lies. And and who, you know, the father of lies getting involved with some of this could be a, an issue. But obviously, that's what we want is truthful information and accuracy so that we can use this in a positive way, right? Absolutely, Cheryl. That, that is spot on. And it, as you were speaking about this... I'm reminded of the uh, significance always, right? But but I think in this particular discussion of the prologue of the gospel, as mm. uh, recounted by St. John, mm -hmm. right? In the beginning was the Word. And I think it's important. I think I would encourage us here in the studio and our listeners to maybe, you know, sometime today, go back and re reread that prologue, which we've read countless times, right? But read it slowly and carefully and let us remember that Jesus Christ himself is the incarnate word of God. And he is the word. I mean, we can, you know, we can produce words, but he is the word of God. We cannot become like God in the sense that we can create things, whatever they may be, uh, to to have some kind of divine power, it just it just like Cheryl, you just said impossible. You know, so your your response to your mother, mm -hmm. uh, respectfully, right, was 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 proper and right. So the um, uh, you know moving forward, you know, we talk about the morals and ethics, and of course, when we have anything new. We need to take into consideration, I guess, some basic principles. And you know, going back to what this. Uh, you know, Rome call on AI ethics, what, what they put forward, and, and this is something that whenever you have anything new, um, any sort of new technology or, or any sort of other discussion around it, um, I, I guess it's important to look at, you know, it, they mentioned six. They mentioned transparency, inclusion, responsibility, impartiality, reliability, and security and privacy. Of course, you know, you think back when the when the Internet you know, first came out and, you know, everyone was like, you know, this is, you know, we're not quite sure if this is going to be used for good or bad. Of course, you know, it came out, we got a lot of information, the communication, everything was, was, was great. But then it was used for, you know, evil purposes. Um, and, you know, e even now we continue to have discussion about metaverse uh, and, 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 you know, can we create our own uh, little time outside of time and, and whatnot. And, and, and no, you, we just can't, you can't do that. But, you know, for those of, of the, our listeners who, you know, are our future leaders, our current leaders, and, and, you know, we have that responsibility, of course, as, as Dominicans, we, we do as well, is to, to promote the common good for, for all. Because just as, as the Holy Father said, is that, you know, this is, can, be, can be used for good, but if it's used for the sole intention of eliminating jobs or for evil, then then no, it, it, it's not good. And um, and that's why I think it, it's great to talk about this today because it's something that's very timely. And as, as Dominicans, it's always important for us to speak the truth and you know just call upon um, you know all those in, in, in leadership positions and, and others to use uh, this sort of technology wisely, uh, morally, and ethically. Remember to stand firm in the absolute truth, Jesus Christ, because only the truth bears grace. Lived through time, passed through fire, broke my heart, wounded desire, changed my life, fixed the past, I stared at death, and it stared back. Standing fast in the light of the word, a shotgun blast was the last thing I heard. I rattled in the wind like a window pane, my soul's all right, but my body...